In today's video, I'm going to show you how to process full panels of plywood using nothing but a track saw, getting everything ready to build your cabinets so that everything is exactly the same length and the same width so everything is square when you make the cabinet boxes. All right, this is going to be part one in the cabinet building series, and I'm going to title it Breaking Down Plywood. Make sure you watch this video all the way to the end. This way you can see exactly how you can get perfect parts, all the same size, and ready to assemble. All right, let's get started. Okay, everybody, welcome back to my shop. For those of you who have been here before, welcome back. For those of you who are new to the channel, welcome to the channel. Hope you guys are enjoying the content. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss anything. We're always coming up with new stuff here. You can do this with a circular saw, with a couple of saw horses. You can do it on a work table. You can do this on the floor the way I used to do it with uh, pieces of rigid foam laid down and the sheet of plywood or melamine laid down on top of that rigid foam and you need a good track saw and a track. You could also do it with a circular saw and a homemade track, or you could use a straight edge, clamp it down after you make your markings. It's not as accurate. If you're looking for ways to make your own type of track saw track, I have a video on my channel. I'll also link it in the description. You can see how you can make one of those tracks to use with a standard circular saw so that you can do this. All right, so let's get started today. Don't be intimidated. I'm using millimeters. I'm going to go metric today just for cabinet building because um, I'm finding it now building cabinets in metric is a lot easier for me especially since the plywood is 18 millimeters um, uh, instead of having to try to translate 23 30 seconds and get my measurements all crazy and things like that nothing lines up so we're gonna be working in metric but the principles all apply to Imperial also it's the same thing so I'll explain as I go so don't be intimidated by that I'm gonna be using parallel guides that's gonna uh, allow me to after I rip a straight edge to make everything uh, parallel to each other the same way that you would after you rip the straight line and put it on the table saw all right so we're using that track saw and then we're going to be using the MFT table a cross cut but you can do the same thing with a good square and a straight edge and a circular saw if you wanted to make a 90 degree cut all right so uh, follow along this is the first in a series for the cabinet making so we got to break down the sheet goods that's how all good cabinet carcasses start with some good sheet goods I'm using three quarter birch ply and try to get the straightest you can find no matter what you do they're going to twist and warp into like pretzels and potato chips but um, for the most part when you're building a box the structure of it will square everything up once it gets nailed and screwed together so what we're going to do is since i work by myself i recommend if you do the same that you buy one of these this is a plywood gripper and i'll show you how it works it makes it real easy all you got to do is place it just about in the middle of the plywood and then as you lift this handle it can't leave as the whole thing to grip the back of the plywood you just get under it like this stand straight up and walk away with the plywood and i'm going to start breaking it down on this mobile saw station so this right here is basically just works on like a leverage principle this squeezes onto the plywood and as you lift it up, this part squeezes in, pinches it together, and it allows you to easily use your legs and your body uh, mechanics to lift the plywood, you know, basically with ease. Because that each sheet weighs about 50 pounds. So when you're by yourself, it gets a little uh, daunting. I'll link that in the description. Okay, so I used to break down plywood on the floor. If you see my older videos with the track saw, I would throw a piece of the foam insulation on the floor and use the track saw to cut everything up. I don't have to do that anymore with this because... It's kind of designed for you to work by yourself with the plywood. So I'm just going to position this just roughly about the center. I'm going to lock these wheels just roughly as close to the plywood as I can get it. I might be in your way here a little bit for a couple of seconds. I'm going to lift it up onto those hooks. And you can you can kind of get an idea of where I'm going here with this. Step it back. And those hooks on the bottom, they'll hold it in place. Since I have the wheels locked, I'll be able to tilt it back right from here. I'm going to put my foot here just in case because even though the wheels are locked and it's not going to move, this floor is just a little bit slippery. So I'm going to pull right from here, just lean back. And first thing we got to do when working with sheet goods 
is you never trust the factory edge. They're all jagged, they're not straight. You wanna start off with a nice, clean, straight edge. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this back just about uh, maybe like 3 sixteenths to 3 eighths of an inch oversized because the plywood is oversized purposely for this. So you're getting a little more than 48 wide, a little more than 96 inches long. So what you do is you straight line rip this and I'm gonna bury the saw blade a little bit. Just like I said, this is probably like six millimeters, maybe three eighths, and that's gonna optimize my dust collection here. I have my splinter guard on the side and I'm connected to dust collection. I'm still gonna use a mask because plywood has resins you don't wanna breathe. Okay, so next to the track saw itself, I think my favorite part of this system is the parallel guides. I'm recently getting rid of my sliding table saw because it just took up too much room in this small shop. So this is like having a table saw without having a table saw. It doesn't take up any footprint except for the plywood itself and the length of the track. So this is a really great part of the system here. And so today I'm going to be working in metric. These are metric. I do have a set in Imperial. So if you're working in Imperial and you do have something like this that you wanted to buy, you can buy it in Imperial. You don't have to get it in metric. I was fortunate enough to use a lot of the, um, the profits from jobs that I do to pay for these tools so, and the sales of the old tools. And so I got myself a set of the metric and Imperial. So I got a set. I'm going to cut my long sides of the cabinet first. So I'm cutting them down to 336 millimeters and in width. Now that's going to account also for the face frame. So 30, 336 millimeters or in um, Imperial, it would be 13 and a quarter. So basically the total of getting it to 14 inches would be 13 and a quarter. And then the three quarter face frame will get me to the 14 inch mark. So at 336 millimeters, that's going to put me right there. So the only reason I'm working in metric is because I want to start building uh, finer cabinetry with the LR32 system. As you can see, the holes here, we're gonna be using that for the shelf pins later on. So I just set my stop blocks to 336 millimeters, and then come down here, 336. And I come right to the center, and just from the center, push until both stop blocks hit both ends, and now I know I'm ready to cut. Okay, so a couple of things now. You saw we made that cut. Now, the easy part is I just slide this over like this. Now, I know that I can get three sides out of this one piece that I cut. So later on, we're gonna square this all up. I have two edges parallel. We're gonna use the MFT later with the fences to make sure that we cut everything exactly to the size that we need and everything is gonna be square. So here's the beauty of these. You just move them down, just like that. Hold this piece out right here. Now you can do two things. You can stack it on the back, like that, or you can stand it up and get it out of your way completely. And you can just label it. These were 336 just so I know to come back later, and those are gonna be parts of my sides. Now, I can move this piece forward, back this up again. I know I need more pieces at that length, so all I have to do is push this back in the middle so my stop block's hit. Now, I have this piece left over here, right? And it's 199 millimeters. So it's just one millimeter shy of 200. Well, guess what? 
to maximize the sheet, I still need to use this because I need to make spanners or hanging rails or what if you want to call them nailers, those spanners that go on the top of the cabinet caucuses and also in the back of the cabinet caucuses, those not only stabilize and square everything up, but they give you something to bite into when you're screwing it into the studs to attach it to the wall. So what I'm going to do is since it's 199 millimeters, you can roughly say 200. So instead of cutting them each at 100 millimeters and because you know, get the width of the blade, uh, basically you're going to lose that in the curve. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut them down at 95 millimeters a piece. Okay, so that'll give me 95 and 95 metric. Let's see how good you are at metric. It's going to give me 190. Okay, so I flipped the guide rail around and I've taken off the stop blocks from the inside here and now they're going on to the extension piece and I have to set these to, if I remember, 95 millimeter. That's 95. And now I put the one of the off cuts from before, the 336 millimeters, just back here for support because the rail is wider than the piece we're going to cut. So that support will give me um, a little advantage not having these tip backwards as I'm trying to cut. So I have my MFT set up now with the fences on there because I'm going to start to cross cut. Um, I need four pieces at 670 millimeters. Now if you don't have an MFT set up like this and you're just either on a table or on the floor with the uh, rigid foam pieces and you're cross cutting with a, um, a track saw or even a straight edge with a clamp and running a circular saw because you can do that also, just make sure you get a good square and you're going to put it up against the corner of the plywood and then you can butt it up against your rail and then you can make your straight cross cut. I'm going to take my first piece here. Now, we don't have a 90 cut yet because we only cut these edges parallel. We need to square everything up. Now, what I'm going to do is, since I need 670 millimeters, instead of sliding this thing all the way to the end over there with no support and making a cut, what I'm going to do is measure out from here because I need to square this edge up so I can run my straight edge up against the fence and I know that with this 90 to the fence I'm gonna get a 90 degree cross cut but since I need 670 what I'll do is I'll come over here and make a mark at 675 so now what I'll do slide this over, hit my fence, it's right on my line. So now the piece is oversized. So what I'm going to do is when I cross cut it here, now I have a 90 edge here. All I'll have to do is flip it over and bring it to the stop block set at 670 and then I can make all my continuous cross cuts. do is I have a square edge here. Now I'll just measure and mark out 670. Now what I can do is move the stop lock to my material once I have it on my line. Okay, so that right there is going to be 670. So now I just bring my stop block up to the piece. And now I can continue to cut, slide it down, cut, and get all my pieces squared up. So now here's another quick tip. I have my flag stop already set for 670. 
So I know I got those three pieces cut at 670, but I need more. So now I had to use the second piece that I ripped down um, to 336 wide. So I still need to make a nice 90 degree edge on this. We don't have one yet. So just the way I did it before, I'm gonna oversize the cut, flip it over and hit the flag stop. So this way I don't have to keep shuffling things back and forth. So here's the little trick. All you have to do is slide your piece down slightly past where your flag stop is, just about three or four millimeters. This way you don't waste anything. And you bring your guide reel down and you're gonna make a slightly oversized cut. Now all I have to do is take the piece, put my flag stop back down, flip it over this way. That's my 90 degree edge up against the fence, hit the stop lock, guide rail down, and you can see the four millimeter oversize right there. Mark it, and put it with my other pieces. So now I need two bottoms at 805 millimeters, and I need my hanging rails or my spanners. I need two for the tops and two for the backs as nailers and at also 805. So I'm gonna have a total of two um, 805 millimeter bottoms out of the 336 millimeter wide uh, pieces that I have here. And then I need to cut eight total pieces from those spanners or those hanging rails that we cut from the leftover edge of the plywood at 95 millimeters. Okay yeah, guys, so that's it. I really hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you got something out of it. This is the easiest way to break down plywood. Um, the way I used to do it was on the floor with a rigid foam, get on my hands and knees and make the cuts. Uh, I used to have a, a DeWalt track saw. The only problem with the DeWalt is it was a good track saw, but it didn't have any accuracy. It was all relying on you and your eye to make that measurement, make the mark, and put the track exactly where the mark is. With the parallel guides, the MFT, and uh, help of you know some good squares and things like that, uh, this is just, it's a no-brainer. You can always get the accuracy, uh, repeatable cuts with the stop block, and you know once you get your uh, your spanners down to anything below 12 inches um, you can, or up to 12 inches if you have a sliding compound miter saw then you can make those cuts on the miter saw. I didn't need to do that because the MFT was all set up already. Uh, I could have done it with the spanners but there's no point. I'm going to be using the miter saw when I do the face frames so that's going to be another part of the series. So this is part one. So make sure you watch it in its entirety. When I'm done with all the videos, or as I make the videos and finish them, I'm gonna put them into a playlist and I'm gonna title it Cabinet Making Series. And we're gonna put them all in a group there. So this way, when you wanna watch any particular episode, you can go straight to it or you can watch it from the first episode all the way to the end when it's all done. Okay, so this is the, the first in the series of because I'm making built-ins. So just remember also that the measurements that I'm using are not standard cabinet sizes. You need to find out your cabinet size that you're going to make. Okay, guys, so I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit the picture of the notification bell. Hit the like button. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. All right, well, thank you all for joining me again, and I will see you very soon as soon as we start the next video, which is going to be uh, making the shelf pin holes and sanding everything down and assembly. And then we're going to take it from there, from face frames and all that stuff. We're taking this all the way to um, up to installation. So stick with me here. There's going to be a lot of videos, but there's going to be a lot of good information in these videos. So I hope you guys really get something out of it. All right, thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time.